What is brown, hairy, and wears sunglasses? <laughs> Just say a monkey, but... <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Gina. What is brown, hairy, and wears sunglasses? <laughs> a coconut on vacation. <laughs> okay. This is Gina. And this is Don. With Focused Healthy Family. And it's time for Tuesday Tips. And today's tip is from uh, Stephen Schoenthaler, a PhD from California, and David Benton, MD, from England, who have published studies indicating that appropriate nutrients can increase IQ of some students as much as 30 points. The behavior and activity levels definitely improved in children studied by these two doctors. This is taken from the book, Is This Your Child's World? by Doris J. Rapp, MD. And I want, you know, we're talking about nutrients and how important they are for us getting the vital nutrients. And we want to think about too, is not only getting the right nutrients, the right foods, but how do those nutrients and how do those foods absorb in our body? And with that, it's important to really get some deep testing done that to find that out. Vitamin D levels are very linked to depression and all kinds of things. And so looking at that level, it's something that's not routinely looked at with routine blood work, but asking for it, I think typically they say it needs to be either 20 or 30. But if you look in the nutrition world, they say somewhere between 30 and 60 is really more of an ideal level. So digging a little further, digging a little deeper when it comes to nutrition, getting nutrients from the foods we eat is always priority. Yet because the way food has been grown, especially in the United States, it may not have the nutrients that we think it does. And so it's important to look at the source of where our food is coming from. How long has it been sitting on a truck or traveling to get to us versus you know, it's summertime, going to a farmer's market, buying local, buying fresh produce. You know, frozen is the next best thing to fresh because it's often frozen quickly after picking. A lot of times right at the field, they'll freeze it. I know, too, for for an adult, for myself especially, is uh, magnesium and potassium levels are very important, too. So making sure that you're getting the proper levels. That, and again, that if you're taking supplements for these things, uh, you want to make sure that these supplements are um, methylating, uh, being able to absorb. Be absorbed in your body. Methylated versions methylated. of things can be more easily absorbed. And so, it, but it's important to look at what your levels are. A lot of supplements are water soluble, and so too much of them will go through your system, but that's not true with everything. It's definitely not true with iron, and so you don't want to take too much. And there are things that can really have an impact on behavior. There's a lot of studies behind fish oil and omega fatty acids and the importance of that for brain health and affecting behavior and function and cognition. And so looking into this information, finding someone in your area who's a specialist in func functional medicine, functional nutrition, holistic, holistic medicine, yeah. a naturopathic doctor. They tend to... Uh, go deeper into the testing than, than your, a medical doctor would. Because typical medical doctors who go through school to get their MD have very little nutrition training in that program. Hmm. And so they are really not the experts on this area. And so doing some research on your own, connecting with other resources in your area, there's a lot of great books out there with information. And uh, the idea of organic, too. We want to, you know... One of the things I know, I, I work with a naturopathic doctor, and and he talked about uh, the fact of if you're on a budget. That's next week. <laughs> okay. Save that for next week. <laughs> we talk about So it. stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Where we'll talk more about what's in our food. <laughs> I'm giving away clues from next week, but that's actually good. That'll entice you to want to listen to our next one. And play with food. Food can be fun. We have this great book called How Are You Peeling? <laughs> and it's a list of different vegetables that have faces in them and shapes in them. 
And you used to take it to the grocery store yeah, I took with our my, oldest when, when he was little. When, when he was just pretty much a toddler, he would sit in the basket and I would get the book out and I would have him look at the book and then see if he could find the the, the uh, fruit or whatever that it, what vegetable that it was. And then, of course, we would play with that and do all kinds of it. We had, we had a great time. We'd spend a lot of time in the produce department. <laughs> And so playing around with food, making it fun. Somewhere I've seen, I think on Facebook, it was like a choo-choo train made out of vegetables. And we used to let our kids like decorate their plate with their vegetables, making smiley faces with things, incorporating different hummus and different dips. You can make a lot of different relatively healthy dips that incorporate vegetables. Also smoothies, being able to incorporate uh, vegetables uh, like uh, greens. Especially it's easy like to spinach. put greens in a lot of things. I've had friends who've put a little bit of spinach in their chocolate chip cookies. If it's ground up and it's small, you don't even realize it's there. I used to do that with our middle child, who was kind of particular, not a big fan of fruits and vegetables. And I'd make her a smoothie. And as long as it had some chocolate in it, I could put <laughs> some spinach or kale as my other favorite one. You have a good food processor or blender that's going to grind it up and you, you don't taste the green. Well, and think about something like nettles, which is a real high nutrient uh, green. Also chia seeds, things like that, that are what they consider superfoods that are very high in nutrients. And so like when it comes to baked goods, I like to add in extra ingredients, add to it so they can still enjoy this treat. And yet having other things in like there. Zucchini, like your zucchini muffins, which are yeah. excellent. But you got to make sure to grind them up because our kids, if they're too big, they well, sometimes Well, one child can... wants the zucchini puree, doesn't want pieces of zucchini. Yeah. But looking at, you know, ways that food can be fun and realizing the importance of good nutrition and thinking about how you eat. You know, how you're eating is what your children are observing and making sure you take the time to invest in your own health to invest in theirs. And so play with some food. Think about how, you know, there's a great recipe for, they're called zucchini squares, but it's basically like a chocolate brownie, but with zucchini in it. Mm -hmm. And there's just a lot of different ways to incorporate either hidden or obvious in the, that, that makes it added nutrients and still be really tasty. I'm thinking of your run to the bathroom brownies. <laughs> <laughs> That's back in the days when we were eating vegetarian and it was soy based, but it was pu prune puree was what sweetened these brownies. <laughs> and it was my dad. It was years ago. And uh, he loved those brownies. He ate a whole bunch of them. And then <laughs> he's like, I don't know what's in those brownies, but he was having to go to the bathroom. So <laughs> we started calling them run to the bathroom brownies. So that's our, our tip for today. I uh, hope that it has helped you out. And uh, you can check us out at FocusHealthyFamily.com for more information about what we do. And be sure to tune in Thursday, either audio on wherever you're listening to the podcast, or go to YouTube. We're also broadcasting things with the video now. For our full podcast. Yes. So thank you and uh, take care. Have a wonderful day.